Shalom, Gabe Greenberg here, Rabbi of Congregation Beth Israel in New Orleans, Louisiana, learning with you this week as we do every week, the commentary of the Mitziv on the weekly Torah portion. This week is Parshat Akev. We're going to be looking at Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. A somewhat well-known, beautiful two lines. I'll read the full two lines and then we'll get into the commentary of the Mitziv. It's the beginning of the fifth Aliyah. Ve'ata Yisrael... Ma Hashem Elokecha Shoel Me'imach, and now Israel, nation of Israel, what is it that the Lord your God asks of you? Ki'im li'ira et Hashem Elokecha, lalechet b'chol drachav u'lahava oto. What is it that God asks of you? Just that you fear or be in awe, have awe of the Lord your God, walk in all of God's ways, love God, v'la'avod et Hashem Elokecha b'chol levavcha v'chol nafshecha, to serve the Lord your God with all of your heart and all of your soul. And then the next line, Lishmor et mitzvot Adonai ve'et chukotav asher anochim et hayom latov lach. To guard, to keep the commandments of God and God's statutes, which I command you this day for your own good. So, the Netziv picks up on the phrase ki'im, which means simply that, or just that, or only that. The context is, what does God ask of you? Only that you do this, or just that you do this. But after that ki'im, after that the only, this is all God asks of you, there's actually a long list, which is profound. Fear God, love God, uh, walk in God's ways, keep God's commandments, uh, so these are weighty, difficult things to do, but they're prefaced with, this is all God asks of you. So the Nitziv opens up, picking up on that question. He's, the Nitziv says that this is a difficult to understand verse because everything that could possibly be asked of a person is asked here. Uh, what else could what else is there to ask and yet it's prefaced with this uh, key aim with this this is all that God is asking of you and in fact I was not aware of this midrash then it see picks uh, cites a midrash a rabbinic uh, story wherein this very question is uh, posed by King David so now the Nitziv quotes the midrash and uh, we'll quote it as well there in the 27th Psalm, which we read soon in the month uh, of Elul, up in the run up to the high holidays and then through some of the high holidays as well. In the 27th Psalm says as follows, Achat sha'alti me'et Hashem ota avakesh. There is one thing I ask of God. This is my request. Shifti bevet Hashem kol yemei chayai. That I sit in the house of the Lord all of my days. So the Midrash cites, quotes that line, and then says, Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu David, God said to David, Ata Amarta Achat Sha'alti, first you, David, open this psalm by saying, I only have one question, Ve'ata Mivakesh Harbei, but then you request a major thing, i.e. sitting in the house of God all of your days. So then, then, according to the Midrash, David responds, citing our verse in Deuteronomy. Amar lo, David says to God, Gam ata amarta, ma Hashem lokecha sho'el me'imach. You too, God, say in your Torah, what is it that God wants of you? Ubikash harbe, but then you ask of us, ask of hu Jews, humans, uh, a great deal. So it's a really beautiful Midrash, which notes two places in Tanakh, one where God is asking of us, one where we, in the words of King David, are asking of God uh, a lot, and yet both requests are prefaced with a modifier which seems to say, I only, I only have a small request. So that's a great parallelism that the Midrash picks up on. The Nitziv has several other questions or pro sort of problems with our verses. Um, and, f and he then goes on to resolve uh, 
resolve the problems by saying that these two lines, our two lines 12 and 13, are not, all of these requests are actually not uh, for every human being. That, that different people, there's, he's going to go on to say there's four categories of people and the, the commandments, the mitzvot in these two verses, uh, different parts of them are for different groups of people. So let's see what the Nitziv says. He says, Ra'ui ladat sheyesh arba madregot b'Yisrael. You should know that there's four types or levels of people within the, uh, within the uh, the Israel the people Israel. And here's here they are, Rashim uman higim b'Yisrael, the heads of the Jewish people. Number two, Talmidei chachamim, hanikraim zikne Yisrael, the Torah scholars, the or and the elders. Three. Bale batim oskim biparnasatam. Number three is householders who work for a living. And lastly, nashim vaavadim uktanim. And lastly, women, servants, and children. Now, for our purposes, we could say that now it, the Nitziv was writing in the 19th century. We could say nowadays, of course, women serve in the first three groups as well. There are women who lead. Uh, communal organizations and, and run Jewish communal life. There's female Torah scholars and many women in the workplace who work for a living to support themselves and their family. So uh, we can bra bracketing that, let's see how he applies the commandments in the two verses to these four categories. He says the first category, as we said, were the leaders of the people. And it's to them Ma Hashem Shoel Meimach, what does God ask of you? And the first, remember, the first commandment in that line is Yira, Ki Im Liira At Hashem, to fear God. And this is for the those who work in communal uh, Jewish life. Why? Ba'asher Mishu Rosh Vosek Petzarche Rabim, someone who is a head who is a leader and works for the common good, that such a person might be uh, led, it could happen they would be led astray to work for their own good and for their own honor. And or to give good to someone uh, associated with them. So they sort of use their power uh, nepotistically. So such a person, says the Nitziv, it's that group of people who have to focus on Yira. They have to act with awe, know there's a higher power, and that all the good that they do should be for the collective good and that they should not work for themselves or for the benefit of their family and friends. So that is the first category. The second category, Ziknei Hador, the elders, Shehem Tamidei Chachamim, Amalei Torah, the Torah scholars who really are uh, spend their day in Torah study. Alehem mutelat mitzvat ahavat Hashem. So the second, the second mitzvah in the list was ahavat Hashem, loving God. And the third, and and, and then followed by lalechet bechol uh walking in God's uh, path. Vilavod at Hashem elochecha, and fully serving God bechol avavcha bechol nafshecha, serving God with your heart and your soul. So the Nitziv says that. It's the Torah scholars who have to uh, really uh, delve into this mitzvah of Ahavat Hashem, Udvekut Arayon Bo Yitparach B'chol Leva Nefesh, and clinging to the godly idea. O mitzvot masiyot B'chol Minei Diktukim Hayoter Efshariim, and fulfill all of the commandments to the most punctilious degree possible. Shahare, and why is this the group that can do that? Shahare, HaTorah Makshara Tolakach, their uh, constant engagement in Torah enables them to live and uh, perform the commandments to this uh, great degree. Vegam lelechet bedarchei Hashem, also, as the verse said, to walk in God's ways. And the and he cites the Rambam, who says, says in Hilchot Deot, Shetamid chacham shone b'chol derachav me'ish hamoni, that a Tamil Chacham, a Torah scholar, 
is should be different in all everything he does from uh, uh, someone from the general population. Bemachlo, vehilucho, ubedibaro, and the way they eat, the way they walk, the way they speak. And this is something that Torah, if you are really truly engaged fully in Torah, it should enable you, impact you, change you such that you're able to live at this great level. That was the second category. The third category, uh, Hamon Yisrael. This is the great general group of uh, Jewish people, Haoskim Biparnasatam, who have to w- go to work, who make a living, come home. Alehem Muta Lishmora Mitzvot. So the next line was Lishmorat Mitzvot Hashem Ve'et Chukotav to keep God's commandments and God's statutes. So this is the group who are se- who are told in these verses, do mitzvahs, keep the commandments. Bismanam Volo Yeha Esek Shalahem Mevatela Mitzvah. You might have thought that because you're working and you are burdened by the difficulties and the challenges of daily life, that you'll put the demands of your work, the demands of your work, of your daily life, and your errands, uh, will, will, those will become paramount and you won't take the time to do the mitzvahs. So simply, that group has to be shomrei mitzvot, keep the Torah's commandments. This is a, a, I think, insightful point by the Nitziv that it would not be possible to ask of a person who is uh, so involved in their daily living and daily grind of work and life. We wouldn't be able to demand of that the constant attention and constant punctiliousness uh, to be aware of awe of God and fear of God. Rak maseha mitzvot befoal. Simply, we ask of them, we demand of them, do the mitzvahs. Ze hakadosh baruch hu shoel mehem. This is what God asks of them. And then the last category were those people uh, who uh, don't have the full obligation of all the commandments uh, upon them. And here the Nitziv associates them with the last line of that verse, which was latov lach, for your good. The Nitziv says, for these people... HaKadosh Baruch Hu Shoel Lihiyot Latov HaYishuv VeHalichot Olam That whatever the, this group of people is doing should be the good for the good of the general community. That's what's asked of them. So the question really, I think, uh, here is really what I love a little more than the answer than it seems pointing out, just like the Midrash did, uh, that the line opens with, what is it that God wants of you, O Israel? Simply this, ki'im, simply this, and then the list is really an incredible list. Fear God, love God, walk in God's ways, keep all of the commandments. And then it seems solves this, this sort of tension by saying, ah, really these two verses with, with these various commandments in them are inclined towards different groups of people, different types of people, people in different stages of life, people uh, who have different tafkidim, who do different things in the world, have to... Uh, each mitzvah uh, is intended for for these uh, distinctive groups, and they have to uh, rise to the challenge, respectively. Again, a very beautiful and insightful piece of Torah from the Nitziv. I look forward to learning with you more next week. Thank you.